Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles has always been a game with an outstanding premise and framework held down a few notches by clunky design choices and slightly tedious gameplay. Two years ago I reviewed the original GameCube game and speculated that the Nintendo Switch offered a perfect chance to rework the game and truly make it shine. And shortly after, Square Enix did indeed announce the remastered edition. This was met with immense joy and high hopes, but also slight worry as to how far they'd actually go with it. So, does the remaster finally iron out the kinks to create a true masterpiece and the definitive Crystal Chronicles experience? Well, let's look at the pros and cons of both the remaster and the original game, and just what the game even is. The game is an action RPG at heart, but the fundamental piece of Crystal Chronicles that makes it alluring from the start is the camaraderie of various characters all hailing from the same hometown village of Tipa in an effort to save it from the poisonous air known as Miasma covering the world, which even the opening cinematic drives home. Each player picks their own character tribe and a family trade to grow along the journey from a nice array of choices. This is a perfect framework for multiplayer cooperative play, as maybe your blacksmith character can't craft new weapons and armor without materials from the town merchant, who of course is the father of one of your friend's characters who can buy at a discount and then trade those items with you to bring to the blacksmith. To add to the all-important feel of customization, each tribe has 8 designs to choose from, which the remastered edition bumps up to 10 each. Of the tribes, first up are the Clavats, who have all-around stats in attack, defense, and magic. Next are the Lilties, a small statured tribe that has the highest attack power of all the tribes, but low magic. Third are the Yukes, a mysterious tribe with very high magic power, but low attack and defense. And finally, there are the Selkies, an agile tribe of thieves who can charge focus attacks faster than anyone and otherwise have slightly tweaked all-around stats like Clavats. To be exact, they have one point higher attack, one point lower defense, and one point lower magic. So the variety is there for up to four friends to nestle in and feel proud of their role in the great journey about to unfold. There really is nothing like designing a new character and getting a snack and nestling your butt in the couch. But anyway, at this point it should be very clear that the glue holding all of this together is multiplayer. Let's say you didn't have friends and chose to be a selkie with the family trade of the blacksmith. Well, that's it then. That's your hometown. A bunch of empty houses and land with nameless Mughal landlords telling you nobody's home, and then your lone family off in some corner. You can create stand-in families to help flesh out the village, but those characters you create will not join in the adventure ever, unless friends hook up their Game Boy Advances and bring them along. Since 2003, this has been the big difference in feel, playing this game single player or multiplayer. The core premise of a four-piece caravan setting out together is destroyed and made terribly lonely in single player mode. But also from day one, the likelihood of four people being in the same place with four Game Boy Advances and four Link cables to even play multiplayer mode was a rare feat, creating probably one of the most unique predicaments in gaming history. So how could the remaster have addressed this? Three solutions come to mind. Option one is AI-controlled allies that behave similarly to other Square Enix games like Secret of Mana to make single player feel less lonely and still allow the other characters to grow. Option two is online multiplayer in addition to the local co-op, eliminating the need for everybody to be in the same place to embark on the adventure together. Option three is to ditch the entire Game Boy Advance gimmick and redesign the gameplay. But option three poses the biggest problem as Crystal Chronicles was from the start a Game Boy Advance link cable project and therefore every single other thing about the game was designed around that. The only other major series game to really do this was The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures. But unlike Zelda, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is an action RPG and as with all RPGs there are tons of menus and items to constantly bring up to change singular stats or parameters. The Game Boy Advance allowed each player to navigate these menus on their own time on their own separate screens without pausing the action on the main TV and irritating the crap out of all your friends playing with the constant stop and go. To bring all of those four player menus onto one TV screen would cause immense clutter immediately posing a problem for local co-op on modern gaming consoles without a total restructuring of the game itself. This makes the only obvious solution online multiplayer, which then opens the door for cross-platform play to make multiplayer more accessible than ever possible on the GameCube, which is exactly what the remaster did. But, did they do it right? Well, there is a lot of negative to say here, but let me just say now that this review will not be all negative. However, I'm sorry to all the patient, forgiving superfans out there, 
But how they implemented online multiplayer is problem number one with Crystal Chronicles Remastered. One so big that it causes a trickle-down effect of other problems. The Remastered Edition totally removed local multiplayer in favor of online cross-platform play, but that's not the issue. The huge problem is that they removed the entire ability to hail from the same hometown and be in the same caravan and on the same adventure, which again is the entire point that the opening movie and the character creation system, as well as the in-game story and dialogue, make extremely clear. Instead, now, multiplayer is restricted to one-off dungeon instances through a very cumbersome lobby system that, at launch, frequently failed so much to the point that the entire game had to be removed from the Australian eShop, followed by a mass apology from the game's director addressing all the connectivity issues. But even when the online connections work fine, only one character acts as a host, and at the end of the dungeon, only that character gets a letter from home and a drop of myrrh in his chalice. Everyone else is just kind of there for one-off support from some other town, and their story doesn't progress at all. In order to do that, the players must all replay the same stage together with someone else as the host, but it's not even that easy. Everyone must disconnect first, go back to the map screen, and then go through the pain of reconnecting in that same cumbersome lobby, ensuring someone new is now the host so that they can progress their own game. Flashback to the GameCube, all four players got mailed together from their same hometown, and the stage only had to be played once, and then, still together, they carried on to a new level for variety's sake, and more than likely also shared a roadside cutscene together to further cement the idea that you are together on the same adventure. I was able to test multiplayer with my friend who used an Android device while I played on the Switch. At first, he disconnected quite often, leaving me alone to fight the boss without even the normal Moogle to fuse spells with. I was able to pick up all the spells that his character dropped, wait for him to join back in, and then drop those spells for him to pick up again, but he lost all of the items from the stage. Then, at the artifact selection screen, which is how you level up your character in this game, he disconnected again and was unable to select an artifact. Eventually, we got a stable connection and got through two dungeons. I was able to even bring my overpowered character that already beat the game in on his brand new adventure, which created an improper balance where I mostly just hung back and let him attack everything. All item drops except Magisite orbs are duplicated for each player to pick up, but once you yourself pick it up, it disappears on your screen, making it unclear if the other player grabbed it yet or not. This also eliminates the cooperative trading aspect that was part of the original game, as every player picks up the same stuff. With my friend as the hosting character, I noticed input lag on my controller and jittery movements during heavy action like during the crab boss of the first level. It often looked like either my friend or myself got hit by the crab's bubble attack, but then it didn't actually register that we did, which means on one of our screens the attack actually missed. This made spell fusion a little tricky as well, and if not for chatting together on Discord, we probably would have never got the timing down. All in all, I found that it takes more time over online play to coordinate with each other compared to local play, causing more situations where you're just a sitting duck for an enemy attack. More than ever, the remastered edition of Crystal Chronicles forces a single-player experience, even if you connect with other randoms in each dungeon, because in the end, you traverse the world and story alone as a one-man caravan from a ghost town. Once my friend and I beat that first stage, we went separate ways for some time to craft new armor, and I was just waiting on the map for him to get access to the second dungeon and host a session while he was watching caravan cutscenes completely unrelated to my own adventure. Again, this just is not the same feel that the game was originally designed to have. But I guess the core dungeon gameplay is still relatively intact, sort of. Anyway, to switch to something positive, at least Square Enix realized the game is now heavily single player and tweaked a few things to better the solo experience. The hometown now has a storage moogle near the entrance for all characters to drop items into for others to pick up. In other words, it's a very roundabout way of trading with yourself, because remember, there's no local co-op. Nobody is playing those characters that you created to flesh out the hometown, but you, at the start of every new year when it matters to talk to the different dads around town. So in practice, there really is only one use for this storage moogle. It is now possible for the alchemist character to drop his or her yearly scroll off at the storage moogle for your main character to pick up, which was impossible to do on the GameCube without two Game Boy Advances and two Link cables. In other words, for the first time without sheets in single-player mode with only one controller, 
it's possible to craft the greatest weapon of the game. Even if your family trade is not the alchemist and you regularly talk to or play as the blacksmith. Of course, that's assuming you're patient enough to sit through all the load screens it takes to change characters and re-enter the hometown to do the dropping off and then load again to do the pickup. I think you get the idea. Which brings us to problem number two of the remaster. Longer loading times than the GameCube and instability. Now, ordinarily, this could be forgiven if, for example, the graphics were absolutely mind-blowing and so many things had to be loaded in. But although the improved resolutions of the remaster do look much clearer than the GameCube, it isn't too big of a jump to really warrant longer loads. For some things, you really have to glance at a side-by-side -side view to really appreciate the differences, as otherwise, while you're playing, it still looks and feels mostly the same as 17 years ago. But the load times become more of a nuisance traversing the map, as this game loves to trigger random roadside cutscenes to buffer a little story in between the dungeon gameplay. And even crossing miasma streams to get to new areas, which is basically just 10 seconds of walking, they have an entry and exit load each. And I mean, it was always a few minutes long of an ordeal, even on the GameCube, but the remaster really tests your patience by adding several seconds onto each load, making it very possible to be playing the game for 5 to 10 minutes, just moving around the map and staring at different black screens. In tandem with these long loads is heavy stuttering in the stages. Almost every stage features multiple sections and a boss arena, each separated by a now longer load barrier. The remaster stutters very heavily after each of these new sections loads in. Canal Karach and Moshet Manor I noticed were especially bad. I've even had the game crash shortly after these loads in my 22 hours of playtime. Combined with the online connectivity issues, the whole game feels like it never went through quality testing, which is especially sad given that it was delayed twice since its announcement. So, is there anything good here besides a storage moogle? Well, yes, there is one very major improvement that deserves praise. Inventory space. The GameCube had a very limited number of inventory slots, meaning very early on you had to be constantly aware of your pockets and your next crafting goal so as not to hoard too much junk. But the pacing of finding scrolls, then finding the necessary materials for that scroll, and then finding the appropriate blacksmith or tailor skilled enough to craft it is often slow and drawn out between many stages. So the threat of no space was always there on the GameCube. In the remastered edition, they give you near infinite pocket space with every single item now stacking in one inventory slot with up to 99 of that particular item. And seemingly no limit to the actual slots available. In my 22 hours of playing the game, I never once ran into a problem of having too much inventory. This makes it so much easier to just grab every drop imaginable and not have to sift through guides to learn what materials you need and what can be discarded, which in turn makes crafting faster and easier. There are also other minor improvements such as the crafting menu now showing what materials you need even if that item cannot be crafted at that particular location. There are also designated menus for food, armor, and artifacts that, although kinda still cumbersome to cycle through, do make selection easier after some practice with it. Another improvement is the bonus point system. At the start of every stage, your bonus requirement is seen on screen, whereas on the GameCube it was completely invisible without a Game Boy Advance linked up to display it. It also seems that they removed the horrible bonus parameters such as don't cast spells or don't pick anything up. As in all of my hours playing, I never once saw these. Whereas on the GameCube, they were very frequent and extremely counterproductive to the player's needs. Radar for the levels now exists at all times, showing every feature that used to be divided individually to four different Game Boy Advances. The radar includes the stage map, treasure locations, monster locations, and terrain outlines all in one, hugely benefiting the single player experience. And really, those are all the nice things I have to say about the Remastered Edition. If the load times are ever addressed in a future patch to at least be on par with the GameCube, then it will be the definitive single-player Crystal Chronicles experience. With the vastly improved inventory as well as the bonus point system and radar no longer restricted to a Game Boy Advance peripheral, and also just looking a tad nicer than the GameCube, it is far more accessible to the single-player. But there was so much left unaddressed about the original game that needed addressing, so even if we ignore all the multiplayer problems, we are still left with a dated, clunky, and kind of tedious experience. What I'm about to talk about is not exclusive to just the remaster. 
One of the major flaws of the original game is the amount of repetition and RNG that the player must endure to get more powerful, and the balance just never feels right. Unlike most RPGs that involve leveling up a character through battle experience, Crystal Chronicles uses an artifact system tied to a bonus point system and makes it as cumbersome as it possibly can. The artifacts can increase strength, defense, or magic statistics by a certain value. That value is determined by the dungeon's current cycle, either 1, 2, or 3, and the player's total bonus points from adhering to the parameter given at the start of the dungeon. Throughout the entire dungeon crawl, you will pick up these artifacts, and the first four that you grab will be instantly applied for the duration of that dungeon. Finally, the boss will always drop a particular set based on your total bonus points. The higher your bonus, the more rare the artifacts that the boss will drop. You get to pick one, and only one, artifact to keep from that whole 15 to 30 minute dungeon crawl, even though you had four applied during it. This whole system was once again designed with multiplayer in mind. The highest scoring player gets first pick, and obviously will choose the artifact with the biggest stat boost, and the lowest scoring player gets left with the scraps. So in other words, for every 30 minutes of gameplay, you might just get an increase of one point to either strength, defense, or magic, never all three, leaving you basically just as weak as you were before. You then must replay the entire stage to choose another artifact, or just go to another level and deal with being weak. But don't get me wrong, for the first few in-game years, this is totally fine. You constantly experience new stages and feel about as powerful as you should, and the novelty of it all keeps you happy as you keep improving your family relationship through letters and learning more about the world and visiting new towns. But every other year, a previously played stage now advances to Cycle 2 or Cycle 3, meaning there are more enemies, and every single enemy's health, defense, and attack power is multiplied by either 1.5 or 2.5 in single player, respectively, and even more with each player added with the potential of all monsters being nearly five times as powerful in Cycle 3 with the maximum four-player caravan. The benefit is the scrolls, materials, and artifacts in the Cycle 3 stages will very likely be more valuable. But even still, it is not a guarantee as each monster and treasure chest is programmed to have one or nothing of a particular set, creating a very frustrating RNG that requires replaying the stages even more than already necessary to grab more artifacts to level up your character. For example, look at this table of the stage Canal Karach, or however you say it. We will see that treasure chests F, K, and N could hold the scroll for diamond armor, the best armor in the standard game. However, Looking further down on the table, those chests could also hold the scroll for pure armor instead, or maybe even just yield money. So you run to them hoping for the diamond armor, but you don't get it even after all three chests are opened. Simultaneously with that defeat, on Cycle 3, the boss has the potential to drop an artifact set that contains the Tome of Ultima, which is a plus 10 boost to your magic statistic. But your bonus points must be high enough to trigger it, as seen in this table. If not, you might get a worse set drop, and guess what you have to do next? Yep, replay the stage and maybe run into the exact same RNG problem. This same problem is even more apparent when looking for tribe-exclusive designs, such as a belt for Selkies and only finding things for Clavats, Lilties, or Ukes instead, constantly. So alright, the next obvious question is, well, are the stages fun? If it's fun, what's the problem, right? Well, remember that every monster has a 2.5 times boost to every statistic, and there are more of the stronger monster types all over the place. And all this time, you've been getting only artifacts with plus one or plus two stat boosts. The result is a flawed balancing that makes it feel like you never grow in power at all, as even the weaker enemy types now take forever to defeat, despite that your attack power has been going up the entire time. And the gameplay isn't exactly varied. You basically mash the A button over and over, then bring up a menu to eat food when you're almost dead, or run away to cast Cure. And even after obtaining some of the best artifacts in the game, you still barely notice a difference in your stats during a Cycle 3 dungeon run. So you run into this issue where stage enemies take almost as long to defeat as the stage boss. So you try everything. You may try to incorporate the weird defend command to avoid constantly getting hit, but it leaves time enough for only one swing of your weapon, which is completely ineffective. 
You might try to run away and cast a big spell, but the charge up time takes too long and you get knocked out of the cast animation. About the fifth time running through the same level just to look for that one scroll or one artifact that could be there according to the programming, fights like this one just leave you cursing the game. I mean, just look at this and ask yourself if it's enjoyable. Five times through the stage, five artifacts later, and a new weapon, that enemy should die faster, right? Isn't that how leveling up works? This to me has been the biggest downfall of Crystal Chronicles since the beginning. The core concept is outstanding and creates one of the greatest cooperative multiplayer structures, but the gameplay itself feels like a whole different idea that clashes with the adventuring feel. Halfway in, it becomes a grind fest with a drastic difficulty jump that feels improperly balanced at the expense of fun factor. And this bitter side is felt even more in single player, which is what the remastered edition is without a successful online connection. And at the moment of reviewing this, the online connection is very rarely successful. Replaying stages a few times is definitely a tolerable thing, especially to experience the three cycle changes. But this game wants you to replay them dozens of times, and the online multiplayer dividing single unit caravans and stories seems to only further enforce that. In my personal opinion, after about three times, the stages can only be so fun, and I find myself just running to the boss regardless of what my bonus criteria is, just to grab another artifact, and then 16 hours later I sit ashamed of all the time I wasted on the stupidity of it all. I hoped the remaster would better balance all these systems and eliminate at least some of the tedious grinding, but instead it seemed to embrace the tedium by even adding harder dungeons in the brand new post-game content, as if Cycle 3 wasn't already a pain to replay over and over. New dungeon themes are a very cool idea, absolutely, but after 22 hours of grinding, the last thing I want to see is the same stage with a different coat of paint. I've seen 15 times already, made even longer and requiring more mashing of the A button on each monster. In the end, all my fears for the remastered edition came true and further reinforced my divided feelings for Crystal Chronicles as a whole. I absolutely love the premise, the initial customization, the growing of the hometown, and working together with my friends to save the world. I've always wanted all of these aspects fleshed out even further as they go only far enough to be there. And when I really think about it, really there is no hometown growth. Your father just gets a little better at his job and seemingly never when you need him to be. It's a fantastic concept that the actual gameplay fails to really make shine. Even the story is just a concept that I can summarize for you right now. Cherish your memories, but don't dwell too heavily in the past or focus too hard on the future or else a monster will eat them and ruin your life. This remaster proves more than ever that Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is a Game Boy Advance project designed as a dungeon crawler with a fixed camera focal point, with all of the great character charms and outstanding concepts added dead last just to make it appealing. And when I really sit back and think about it, it's almost too appropriate for what this game is trying to convey. In 2003, the few times I got to play with a full four-player caravan on our Game Boy Advances, it was an amazing moment that to this day stands out in my memory as one of the greatest cooperative experiences of my childhood gaming years. But that was then. Let's even say it was only one night. One very good night. But no matter how hard you try to replicate every piece of that one good night, you can never fully recreate that night exactly. It'll be a new night with just similar pieces at play. In other words, no good time can ever be fully duplicated or repeated, and that is probably the greatest summary of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. Can you have fun with it? Absolutely. Will it be the same as your greatest memories of it on GameCube? 
No, not even close. Even if all the technical issues get patched in the future, the soul of the game has been stripped, and all of the balancing problems, the clunky menus, and the limited controls still exist and were not addressed at all. The hard truth seems to be that time has moved on, and Crystal Chronicles is but a memory of a happy experience nearly two decades ago. Perhaps it's best not to dwell on it any longer and just be thankful for what it did give us and move on. And yet, there's a very strange thing compelling you to always want to create a new character, because that part of it is tied to the soul of the game, and the soul of the game is so good. Crystal Chronicles is one game I will seemingly always love and hate with a desperate empty feeling, knowing all it could be, but then just isn't.